Today in Across the Fence, we invite you to settle in for a bird's eye view of the Champlain Valley Fair. From the show ring to the midway, we'll see what's new and who's bringing home the blue ribbons. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The Champlain Valley Fair kicks off its 91st year when the fair gates open this Saturday. It's the beginning of what the fair calls the 10 best days of summer. In just a few minutes, we'll meet some of the 4-H youngsters who compete at the fair, as well as some of the volunteers. But first, I want to introduce Tim Shea, who's the executive director of the Champlain Valley Fair and Exposition. Welcome. Thank you. Now, you've been on the job for about a year and a half. So what are your observations so far? Well, the Champlain Valley Exposition and the Champlain Valley Fair are near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. And mm -hmm. I've been uh, thrilled in the 18 months I've been there to be able to uh, share in that experience and bring the Champlain Valley Fair uh, to the folks of Chittenden County and beyond. And so tell me what goes into the planning for the fair, because you start right after the fair finishes. We do, we do. We, you know, we're looking at previous year's fairs, uh, what worked, what didn't work. We also spend a lot of time looking at other fairs as far as successes they have had, mm -hmm. especially around the entertainment, some of the agricultural competition. Um, we've traveled to other fairs throughout the region to experience firsthand uh, the successes they've had, and also try to bring some of those back to, to our fair. So what are some of the things that are popular these days at fairs? Well, certainly agriculture is what the, the, the fair is based upon, and, and, and we're fortunate to have a real strong agricultural presence at the Champlain Valley Fair. But we look at the grandstand entertainment, we'll mm -hmm. talk a bit about certainly the rides, the carnival rides, and there's always the food that people look forward to. Now, it's interesting that you mentioned agriculture because as time goes by and we become less agriculturally acquainted, sometimes it's people's only chance to see these animals up close and see what they can do, what's important about them. That's exactly it, and, and, and uh, from the, the animals, but also the fruits and vegetables, the experiences people can have at the Champlain Valley Fair, they couldn't have uh, uh, anywhere else. See someone shear a sheep, for instance? Exactly, exactly, and we're, uh, we're fortunate we have a wonderful group of superintendents that run our various departments here, and they're really looking forward to the 10 days of the fair. And so what's new at the fair this year? Yeah, um, uh, um, entertainment watch a lot going on. Probably you know, one of the biggest changes, we're starting the fair a bit different this year. Sat on Saturday, the 24th of August, we're going to have the uh, the Blue Cross Blue Shield run uh, 5K fun run to the fair. And that'll be the really? official start to the Champlain Valley uh, Fair starting at 9 o'clock on Saturday opening day. Mm -hmm. And so how do people get registered for that? If they go to our website, ChamplainValleyFair.org, you'll see uh, a link to the registration. We've partnered with uh, Run Vermont. Um, and the VNA uh, to put the event on. And it'll be two laps of the fairgrounds, <laughs> and when the winner crosses the finish line, that'll be the start to the 2013 Champlain Valley Fair. When did you come up with this idea, and why did you decide to do it? You know, we looked at, uh, it was an, an example of other fairs have used, and we're, we're always trying to bring um, uh, different groups, other people to the fair that otherwise may uh, not have been there, and thought the running, there's a big running community in, in, in Vermont, um, uh, run Vermont, the folks that put on the uh, Vermont City Marathon are working with us uh, to, to put the event on and just thought it would be a different twist to the, the fair. And so uh, obviously a big draw to the fair is the entertainment and every year there are big acts and small acts and all different kinds of acts. So yeah. what have you got planned this year? Yeah, this year we start on Saturday opening day in the grandstand with Kesha, uh, a pop singer will be there Saturday night the 24th and mm -hmm. uh, tickets are selling well. There's still a lot of tic uh, tickets available for the show, but it uh, should be a, a great show that evening. The next night we have country music there with uh, Josh Turner and Justin Moore on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Follow that by Monday with Austin Mahone, a very popular singer, uh, be there Monday night. then. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we do our um, our motorsports mm -hmm. figure eight demo derby with uh, Jamie Lee Thurston, and uh, on Wednesday of uh, of the fair with Jamie Lee Thurston, brought by Bond uh, Auto Parts. Mm -hmm. We get uh, Thursday into our tractor pull uh, race, Vermont Tractor Pullers Association, so a bit of a twist this year. Uh, and historically, we worked with a national organization to put the tractor pull on, bringing it local this year with the Vermont Tractor Pullers Association. Oh, nice. We then go on Friday with uh, two local bands, uh, Pleasure Dome and Quadra, two bands folks may see play in the area here, which we're looking forward to. They'll be there Friday night in the grandstand. Mm -hmm. Saturday night, we have um, uh, Damian Marley uh, and Stephen Marley playing in the grandstand. It should be a real fun reggae night there. Mm -hmm. A very different music set than we've historically had at the right, fair. Exactly. So folks are really excited about that. Then, of course, Sunday night, we close it out with Toby Keith. Big uh, dog daddy. Big dog daddy. <laughs> be there Sunday, September 1st. Uh, in the grandstand. And so it's really important to obviously have a variety of different kinds of music for 
what people like to listen to. Exactly. The country has always done well at county fairs and fairs, and we have two great country nights this year, but also with the Mar uh, Damien Marley Show, trying to bring a different set of uh, folks out to the fair, and mm -hmm. we're confident this year we'll do that. And so are there pricing specials? There are, um, especially during midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, probably one of the best deals we have out there on Wednesday is we call our carload special day. <laughs> Folks can go to Maplefields, get a coupon to present at the fair on Wednesday. For $60, it is your admission, parking, and your ride bracelets for the as many you can fit legal limit. Everyone has a seatbelt mm -hmm. in the car on Wednesday. Boy, so that is a great deal. It's a, a great savings. Uh, Thursday, we have our food drive day. We bring a can of food and get into the fair for free from 10 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. Wow, that's So terrific. some real savings out there midweek, trying to bring some savings back to folks this year. And not only mentioned to benefit the food shelf. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? That's great. Yeah, and then there's also an advanced price chopper tickets folks can buy up until uh, uh, the 23rd uh, uh, savings at uh, local price chopper uh, to buy um, tickets in advance. And so what does the fair do to promote education when it comes to agriculture? Yeah, um, as we talked earlier, there's, it's oftentimes folks' only opportunity to see agriculture up close. We have a great uh, Meet the Animals program that leads kids throughout the barns and the agricultural area. They have a little punch card. They see all the animals and learn about the animals throughout our agricultural center. At the end, they get a scoop of ice cream. Um, there's That's that. a deal. <laughs> it's a great deal. And then we have certainly our, our 4-H program there. So there's a, quite a bit going on the education side. Mm -hmm. And so what happens at the Champlain Valley Expo the other part of the year? Yeah, we also there's the other 355 days yeah. of the year, 120 <laughs> uh, events year-round. The fair is certainly our biggest event, but uh, there's boat shows, RV shows. Um, Farm, the farm show we host every mm -hmm. January, we're thrilled to have. So we have roller derby in the wintertime. So outside of the 10 days of the fair, there's, it's, a, it's a venue that people use for a variety of activities, and we're thrilled to, to host them. There's always something going on. Yes. All right, well, Tim, thanks a lot for being with us. It's a great tradition and always a great time at the fair. The 91st annual Champlain Valley Fair kicks off this Saturday, August 24th, and it runs through Labor Day, Monday, September 2nd. For more information, including concert information, you can go to champlainvalleyfair.org or call the fair office at 802-878-5545. It takes a lot of volunteers to help run the fair smoothly, especially when there are competitions and activities that involve children. Across the fences, Rebecca Gollin reports on the wide range of Vermonters who volunteered their time to the 4-H program. The animals are all numbered. The, are the leaders are In 4-H, volunteers run yeah, the show. One, two, three, four. I was volunteering today to uh, do the, the judging tutorial uh, part of the, of the Dairy 4-H program here at Champlain Valley Fair. Jason Devineau, a dairy farmer from Milton, has been sharing his expertise with 4-Hers for over 20 years. I started in 4-H when I was 8 and, uh, and when I was done with 4-H I started volunteering right away. So many people took their time for me and it really, really affected me, you know, in a positive way. I got to see the world because of 4-H and I want to make sure other people get that same opportunity. Devino's dedication is not lost on the kids. I'm on the judging team and so I'll travel to Madison to go judging with 4-H and Jason has judged real cattle shows and so he's a really good judger and so any advice that he could give me would be very helpful. We've been up here a couple of years and he's always down at the end of the barn and we are usually right next to him so yeah I have seen him and we know him pretty well. Ninth grader Jonas Hastings knows that what he's learning now in 4-H will help him in the future. I want to go to college for nutrition and in the dairy business, so uh, every little bit that you can get from anyone that knows anything about cows is always going to help you when you move on, and that's the way you have to do it. You have to hang around with people like him. Like other people in the barn, you just have to sit there and listen to them talk, and that's, that's pretty much what the dairy business is. It's an ongoing teaching your kids and other kids how to do it so that they can keep it alive as they go. How many years have you been volunteering? Uh, roughly 20. In the crowd is Dean Wright, another wow. lifelong 4-H'er who leads the Green Mountain 4-H Dairy Club in Enosburg. I'm a leader and I also work with the um, state, state and local kids with judging. Um, help them get ready with the judging contest and work with the kids to get ready to go to, uh, on a, to Eastern States and Madison in the fall. Wright says that he sees the kids in 4-H today getting the same benefits that he got. It's a lot of hands-on type learning and 
stuff. It's not really sitting in a classroom. When I did it, it was very helpful just on public speaking and not, not being afraid to get up in front of a group or as afraid. These longtime volunteers plan to stay involved in 4-H. Whenever I get a call and I can fit it into my schedule, I, I make sure that, that we do a lot of stuff. I prefer the grassroots stuff the, from the bottom up as opposed to the fancier stuff. I'd rather get people started and give them the right resources. Um, that's really, really more where I feel my strengths are. It's fun to work with the kids and it's fun to see all the kids grow and develop and come out of it with positive things and new friends. This is my first year with 4-H uh, involvement in anything, and it's very exciting. Dan McNamara has come to the fair to volunteer for 4-H in a different way. He's part of a group of 4-H leaders and community members who are evaluating and scoring exhibits by the 4-Hers. It was very informative. I've learned a lot by looking at the posters and all the hard work. You can see that these kids put their heart and souls in this. McNamara is not only a first-time evaluator, this is his first year as a club leader. We do a little bit of everything, horses, uh, outdoor field sports, archery, uh, sugaring, outdoor uh, activities. It's very rewarding to help these kids uh, start off life in an excellent way. And being a mentor to the kids means a lot to me. And uh, I would looking forward to do it some more, do it again, and I will do this again also. It was fun. One often hears that volunteers are the heart of 4-H, and they really are. It's just, it's wonderful to see how many people are willing to give of themselves, and they really make a difference in the lives of kids. Everybody has, has done a lot of work to bring their things here tonight. And so we want Evaluators receive training from 4-H educator Rose Garitano, who's on hand for guidance. What we do is we evaluate the kids' work, and it could be a poster, a tabletop, a photograph. And I've been doing this, you know, I've missed a couple years, but four or five years. Like many, Jean Keefe originally became involved in 4-H when her children were members. Although her kids are now grown, Keefe still volunteers when she can. I just like to be involved in 4-H. I just think it's such a terrific program, and it, it means a lot to me. It meant a lot to my kids, so I just find it very rewarding. The rewards are there for anyone who wants to work with 4-H. There are many levels of commitment. Some of the volunteers are, are episodic. They come in and they might do a short-term program, and then they're done. We have volunteers that, that come in for special events to help evaluate and, and score kids' works. But we also have opportunities to volunteer working on the foundations, helping to fundraise so that kids can um, get scholarships to participate in 4-H programs or to uh, fund materials that might be needed to um, help kids explore a 4-H project area. So the foundation is an important way to volunteer. And of course the volunteer leaders who help share their knowledge of project area and help the kids explore and learn more about areas that interest them. Tim German lives in Essex Junction and has been an evaluator at the fair for the last five years. This is my one 4-H thing each year but one, once I did it once I think a lot of the people just keep coming back because it's it's kind of fun and if you can help out and give the kids some encouragement it's terrific. I live close by, it's easy to come, it's not a big, uh, you know, yank on my time, so uh, definitely worth giving back in this, this way. One thing that you should notice about her, I think she has a lot of style and balance. I think it's, it's really a matter of uh, what makes you feel good at the end of the day. You have to be a happy person, and does helping people make you feel happy? Does, you know, um, making an impact on someone's life make you happy? And then that's, you know, I think you take it from there. You know, you, you decide where you spend your time. Even if you don't have much free time, you can decide where, what's important, what's your priority. For those who make volunteering for 4-H their priority, the payoff is clear. I just want to say thanks to all the people who help with 4-H. You do so much. All the sponsors who give to these fairs so we can go and have fun and do what we enjoy to do. You definitely get a lot out of it. It makes you smile even though it's really hard work. At the end, it's so rewarding. In Essex Junction, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Well, thanks, Rebecca, and thank you for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. 
For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.